welcome back. Today we will have lecture 4-3 on the mesh current method. Students should be reading chapter 4 of the textbook on analysis techniques such as node voltage and mesh current. The objectives of today's lecture are to be able to briefly and clearly explain in your own words loop, mesh, mesh current, and the mesh current method, be able to identify loops and meshes in a circuit, and be able to apply the mesh current method to calculate voltage, current, and power in an electric circuit. Recall that the mesh current method is only valid for planar circuits. For the mesh current method, use KVL to describe a circuit in terms of the number of branches minus the quantity of the number of nodes minus one independent simultaneous equations. A mesh current is the current that exists only in the perimeter of a mesh. Recall that we also have branch currents, where a branch current is the current through a specific element in the circuit. So a branch current may be a special case of a mesh current. Note that figure 4.18 and 4.4 in your text illustrate the differences between mesh and branch currents. It should be evident that it is not always possible to identify a mesh current in terms of a branch current. In order to implement the mesh current method, step one is assign mesh currents I1, I2, IN up to the number of meshes. Step two, apply KVL to each of the N meshes and use Ohm's law to express the voltages in terms of the mesh currents. Step three, solve the resulting N simultaneous equations to get the mesh currents. Step four, determine the relationship between the mesh currents and branch currents in order to find all the voltage and power in the circuit. Similar to the analysis with dependent sources for the node voltage method, the existence of a dependent source must be supplemented by an appropriate constraint equation. Concept question one. In the following circuit, all of the light bulbs are identical. Knowing that the intensity of a light bulb is proportional to the power dissipated across it, when the switch is closed, which of the following statements is true? So the first thing we could do with this circuit is we can model the light bulbs as resistors. And since they all have equal value, we can label all the resistors R. So first, let's look at when the switch is open. When the switch is open, we have 12 volts here, R, 12 volts here, and R here. Remember, this is bulb A, and this is bulb B. So since we have a loop with a net 24 volts around the loop, and we have two resistors with equivalent value, they both have the same voltage drop across them. So here we would have minus plus 12 volts, and here we would have minus plus 12 volts. So the power for A is equal to the power for B, which is V squared over R, or 144 over R. When the switch closes, the circuit now looks like this, where we have R, 12 volts, R, 12 volts, but now we have the six volt source connected in the middle because the switch is closed. So here we have six volts. And what you should see here is for this left mesh, this resistor R has a net 12 plus six or 18 volts across it. And that was bulb A. And bulb B would have a net 12 volts minus a six volt drop. And so we have to have another six volt drop in order to obey KVL. So bulb B has six volts across it. So the power for A is 18 squared over R, and the power for B is six squared over R. So when the bulb is closed, which of the following statements is true? Bulb B is brighter. That's not true because actually it went from 144 over R to 36 over R, so it's actually dimmer. Bulb B is dimmer. That is indeed true because it went from 144 over R to 36 over R. Bulb B remains the same. That's not true and none of the above. So the answer for this problem is letter B. In class activity one, 
For the above circuit, use the mesh current method to find all the mesh currents and confirm that it satisfies the law of conservation of energy. So the first thing we do is we label all of the currents clockwise, I1, I2, and I3. Next, I'm going to label the polarities on each of the resistors with respect to the current mesh current. If I'm on mesh one, this resistor is positive on the left, minus on the right, and the 26 ohm is positive on the top, negative on the bottom. This is drawn so that the resistors obey the passive sign convention and always drop voltage with respect to I1. If I am on mesh I2, I label the currents to obey the passive sign convention with respect to mesh two. So I2 now becomes, for the 26 ohm, positive on the bottom, negative on top. The 90 ohm is positive on the left, negative on the right, and the 8 ohm is positive on the top, negative on the bottom. Then I do the same thing again for mesh three. The five ohm resistor with respect to I3 is positive on the right, negative on the left. The 30 ohm is positive on the left, negative on the right, and the 90 ohm is positive on the right, negative on the left. Remember, it's always so that we're consistent with respect to the passive sign convention, and also so that if I'm on mesh one, the voltage drops are positive, and the voltage rises are negative. So now, let's write the KVL equation for mesh one. The voltage drops are the voltage across the five ohm plus the voltage across the 26 ohm equals the voltage rise, which is 80. That's a good equation, but it would be better to have it in terms of I1, I2, and I3. So what we would have is the voltage across the five ohm is five times the two currents that flow through the five ohm resistor. I have I1 coming in from the bottom and I3 going to the, pointing to the left on the top. So it's five times I1 minus I3. Plus for the 26 ohm resistor, it's I1 that flows into the positive minus I2 that flows into the negative, and that equals 80. Next, I'll do KVL for mesh 2. KVL for mesh 2, they're all voltage drops, so it's going to be the voltage across the 26 ohm plus the voltage across the 90 ohm plus the voltage across the 8 ohm equals zero. So starting with the 26 ohm, it's 26 times the quantity I2 minus I1 plus 90 times the quantity I2 minus I3 plus eight, and since that's an outer branch, I2 is actually the branch current for the eight ohm resistor, so that's just eight I2, and that equals zero. Finally, Let's do KVL for mesh three. This is also all voltage drops. It's the voltage across the five ohm plus the voltage across the 30 ohm plus the voltage across the 90 ohm and that equals zero. So it's five times the quantity I3 minus I1 plus 30 and this is a branch current so it's just 30 I3 plus 90 times the quantity I3 minus I2 equals zero. There are several ways to solve this system of equations, including Kramer's rule, substitution, addition, subtraction, graphing, but the easiest way to do it is to just stick it in your calculator. And depending upon what kind of calculator you have, you can type the, so the equations in directly, or you can do matrix manipulation. So I'm going to actually write the matrix out because that's typically what I use, where the rows of the matrix are the equations one, two, and three, and the columns of the matrix are I1, I2, I3, and the constant on the other side of the equal sign. So row one is going to be five plus 26, 31, minus I2, that's minus 26 minus I3 minus 5, and that equals the constant, which is 80. For mesh 2, it's going to be 
98 plus 26, 124, I2, minus 26, I1, minus 90, I3, and that equals zero. And for mesh three, 90 plus 30 plus five is 125, I3, minus five, I1, minus 90, I2, and that equals zero. So then in your calculator, you can do reduce row echelon form of matrix A, and that will give you the solutions for I1, I2, and I3. I1 is five amps, I2 is 2.5 amps, and I3 is two amps. And now to confirm that this satisfies the law of conservation of energy, we're going to use a table. So here we are going to label our mesh currents. Five amps, 2.5 amps, and two amps. Next, we're going to label our branch currents. So for example, the branch current through the five ohm resistor, if I have five amps coming into this node and two amps leaving this node, then that gives me a net three amps to the right through the five ohm resistor. If here I have two amps coming into this node and 2.5 amps leaving this node, then this gives me a net 0.5 amps through the 90 ohm resistor. Now, since for the 8 ohm, the mesh current is the branch current, the current down through the 8 ohm resistor is 2.5 amps. Same for the 80 volt source, the mesh current is the branch current, so the current up through the 80 volt source is 5 amps. And finally, the 30 ohm resistor is on the outer branch as well, so that mesh current is the branch current, and it is also 2 amps. So what about voltages? The voltage for the 5 ohm resistor is 5 times 3, which is 15 volts. It's positive on the left and negative on the right, so that the resistor obeys the passive sign convention, so that's 15 volts. The 30 ohm resistor has 2 amps, positive on the left, minus on the right, so that would be 60 volts across the 30 ohm resistor. The, half, the 90 ohm resistor has half an amp through it. So once again, to obey the passive sign convention, positive on the left, minus on the right, and that is 45 volts. And the 8 ohm resistor, the current goes down, so that's positive on top, negative on the bottom, and that would be 20 volts. And finally, the 26 ohm resistor, we didn't mark its branch current, but its branch current, would be I have five amps going to the left out of this bottom node and 2.5 coming in. So I need another 2.5 amps to come in through the 26 ohm resistor pointing down. And the voltage would be 2.5 times 26, positive on the top, negative on the bottom, and that is 65 volts. So now we're ready to complete our table. We have 80 volts. 5 amps, this is our only source, so it's delivering power, and it's delivering 400 watts. The 5 ohm resistor, I have 15 volts and 3 amps, so that's absorbing 45 watts. The 30 ohm resistor, I have 60 volts and 2 amps, so that is absorbing 120 watts. The 90 ohm resistor, we have... 90, we have 45 volts and 0 0.5 amps, so it is absorbing 22.5 watts. The 26 ohm resistor has 65 volts and 2.5 amps, so its power is, it's absorbing 162.5 watts. And the 8 ohm resistor has 20 volts and 2.5 amps, so it is absorbing 50 watts. And when you sum, you see that the power delivered is 400, the power absorbed is 400, so the circuit does indeed obey the law of conservation of energy.